This prehistory documentary by Before Caledonia takes a look at the Neolithic Age recumbent stone circles in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. Easter Aquathy's recumbent stone circle. Easter Aquathy's is the best known and best preserved recumbent stone circle in Aberdeenshire. This ancient megalithic ring is a must visit site for the ancient history enthusiast, lay hunter or curious local person. The name Easter Aquathy's may translate from Gaelic as field of prayer or field of pillar. The circle was erected 5,000 years ago and has 11 standing stones plus a recumbent. This recumbent feature is unique in the UK to the Aberdeenshire stone circles. The ring is around 20 metres in diameter and considered one of the earliest recumbent stone circles. Our Neolithic ancestors chose an arrangement of different coloured stones with geological variations. The ring of standing stones are evenly spaced and are made up of pinkish coloured porphyry. The shortest stone is 1.7 metres high. In the southeast arc is a stone of red jasper which is said to have healing or magical properties if touched and also linked with the base chakra. In the northwest section is a diamond shaped stone which may be female. This diamond or triangular shape appears prominently at every stone circle in England. The western arc holds a small stone which seems to mark the sacred hill of Mother Tap. The builders carefully positioned the ring with this hill in clear view. Mother Tap is part of Benachy and has the profile of a female breast, which the ancients may have interpreted as the breast of the Earth Mother. Mother is Scottish for mother and Tap translates as top or possibly tit. It is possible to climb Mother Tap and walk over the top of Benachy for stunning views over Aberdeenshire. Easter Aquathy's recumbent stone is around 4 metres long by 1.5 metres high. This stone is made of reddish granite which comes from the nearby Benahi. The surface seems to have been smoothed off and lines of quartz are visible. The two blocks that protrude outwards from the recumbent is a very unusual and peculiar feature. Perhaps they have some long lost ritual function. Notice how the left side block is smooth and the right block has a rough surface. This is also the case with the two flankers. Perhaps the smooth stones are female and the rough stones are male. On the face of the recumbent is what appears to be an arch which seems to bridge these stones together. The recumbent is orientated south-southwest. A popular theory is the flankers and recumbent act as a viewing frame to watch the moon setting or rising in the southern sky. The position of the recumbent setting is slightly inside the circle's circumference. This was noticed by Scottish archaeoastronomer Professor Alexander Tom, who measured the ring in 1957 and found a true circle. The two flankers either side of the recumbent are the tallest stones at the site. These two stones either side of the recumbent make up the classic Aberdeenshire three stone arrangement, which we will see at each individual site in this documentary. The flankers are made of grey granite. The west flank is the highest at around two and a half metres. Notice from this angle how the flanker resembles a male stone. On the outer surface of this stone a few cut marks can be found. The east flank is slightly shorter, smoother and may be a female stone. There is a quarter of a metre high bump in the central area which suggests a ring cairn. A kist was referenced in 1934. The circle's acoustic properties were explored by Aaron Watson and David Keating. In the site's present state, the architecture influences the sound of the circle. The small stone wall which surrounds Easter Aquathy's was erected around 1847 AD to 1867 AD. The first record of Easter Aquathy's was in 1769 in an estate plan by John Home. The stones were cleaned in 1985, exposing previously unnoticed colouring. 
Recumbent stone circles are unique to Aberdeenshire and the UK but are also found in South West Ireland. Easter Aquarthies is situated three miles west of Inverurie and in the care of Historic Environment Scotland. A small car park is provided with a short 400 metre walk to the circle. Lonehead of Davit Recumbent Stone Circle About 5 miles north of Inverurie is Lonehead of Davit Recumbent Stone Circle. Like Easter Aquarthies, this is another must visit site in Aberdeenshire and one of the best known. Our Neolithic ancestors constructed this beautiful ring in 3000 BC. Lonehead of Davit is a complex site with activity spanning a long period from the Neolithic to the Bronze Age. It is likely fertility rituals, funeral ceremonies and astronomical observations took place here. The stone circle encloses a ring cairn and just a few paces from the circle is a cremation cemetery. The standing stones are made of local granite and are evenly spaced out over a diameter of 20 metres. The ring has 11 stones. Five of these were re-erected after excavation in 1934. From the east flanker to the northeast arc, the stones may be female as they are diamond or triangular shaped. Three of these stones are cut marked and increase in size from north to south. The four stones from the opposite west flanker may be male stones. An outlier stone can be found just outside the ring. This may be the second half of the short dumpy stone in the northwest section. Mother tap would likely have been visible from the circle, but trees now surround most of the ring with only the northern arc horizon now visible. A good eye will make out New Craig, another recumbent site half a mile away. Taking up most of the inside of the circle is a 16 and a half metre diameter ring cairn with a prominent kerb. Cairn has been reconstructed. The open central court has a diameter of 3.65 metres. The ring cairn was built over a layer of burnt material. Four shallow holes were found in the central space. This may have been a small timber rectangular mortuary house. A hearth has also been found in the cairn. The recumbent megalith is orientated south-southwest. It is two metres high by 3.5 metres long and weighs in at 12 tonnes. The stone is split in two lengthwise on a natural plane of weakness. The cause of this was supposedly frost. The top of the recumbent has an even summit and rises gently at the west towards the male flanker. The west flanker at just over two metres high resembles a male stone just like at Easter Aquarthies. There seems to be a male and female symbolism with some of the stones. Fertility may also have been important to the Neolithic people. The east flanker is the same height as the recumbent, however the top looks damaged and this stone is also cut marked. Excavation revealed that each standing stone stood in a small cairn over a pit containing charcoal and pottery fragments and in some cases evidence of burial. Workmen who cleaned out the circle around 1863 found a cup-sized stone ladle. An excavation in 1934 found a large pit cairn in the centre and uncovered a clay sword mould which was likely Bronze Age. Pottery from the Iron Age, flint scrapers, beaker and burials. Robert Shepherd was the first person to have recorded Lonehead of Davit in 1793. Professor Alexander Tom, who discovered the megalithic art, measured the ring and found a true circle. Aubrey Burrow stated, just to the west of south, at 196 degrees, where the full midsummer moon would have begun to sink in the night sky, passing behind the silhouetted flankers before disappearing in the southern mountains. The Cremation Cemetery 
Five metres from the stone circle is a cremation cemetery. This was excavated in the 1930s. Over 30 human cremated remains were found, eight of these being chosen between the ages of three and six. The remains were contained among 13 pits and 12 urns from around 2000 BC. Two urns containing cremated bone were closed up with animal skin or wood and placed in a shallow pit upside down. At the centre of the cairn was a male burial who was part cremated and seemed to be holding a pendant. The cremation cemetery was likely in use after the circle around 3,500 years ago and is similar to cremation cemeteries in South Scotland. 2,500 years ago, the area was used for metalworking. Lonehead of Davit is located near the village of Davit and just off the A920 road. The site is in the care of Historic Environment Scotland with public access and signposted with a car park. Aki Bray Recumbent Stone Circle Aki Bray is another splendid recumbent stone circle situated in the Buchan area. These fascinating megalithic relics still remain in the present day from deep antiquity and hopefully by researching them we may learn a few things about what our ancient ancestors were thinking. Moving and erecting these megalithic sites was a monumental project for the ancient people in the area we now call Aberdeenshire, which holds around 100 of these fascinating recumbent stone circles. Aki Bray sits on top of Park House Hill with open views to the south. An estimated 10 stones would have originally completed the ring, at present, five stones remain in place. The ring is built into the circular bank with outer and inner kerb stones at its base. This structure is made of small stones and earth. It is roughly 2 metres wide with a diameter of 14.5 metres. The southwest to northwest arc contains all three remaining upright stones, which appear to be male. The standing stone in this photo is beyond doubt a male stone. This possible male and female symbolism seems to have been very important to the ancient people. The West Arc stones are graded in height and reduced in size from around 2 metres to 1.6 metres. In the South East to North Arc all the stones have fallen. The oval shaped featureless interior of the ring is shaped like a dish. Reading University examined the ring bank in 2001 and concluded it was erected before the stone circle. This bank feature is particular for the Buchan area. Over 45 kerb stones remain in position and alternate between the colours of white and red. More of these kerb stones lie out of their original position. The huge male light shaped recumbent stone is circa 21 and a half tonnes in weight and orientated south-southwest. It is around 4.5 metres long by 1.7 metres high and held in place by three stones at the base. The recumbent and western flanker is made of wind stone. All other stones are local granite. The top surface of the recumbent is relatively level, however it rises slightly towards the west end. The two flankers still survive but it is only the east flank which still remains upright at just over 2 metres. The west flanker has fallen backwards and now lies over the bank. An 1881 account noted the east flank had also fallen, which suggests a re-erection. These flankers are the tallest stones in the circle, which is a common theme with the Aberdeenshire sites. Charles Elphinstone Dalrymple excavated extensively in the late 19th century. The inner circle revealed very little. An excavation in 2001 revealed some flaked quartz and broken worked flints. Aki Bray is the only recumbent stone circle to have no cremated bone found. 
The first record of Wakey Bray was in 1780 by Lachlan Shaw. Aubrey Burrow said the site was aligned with the major southern moon set. Aki Bray Circle is located three and a half miles southwest of Mintlaw in the north of Aberdeenshire. The ring is in the care of Historic Environment Scotland with public access granted. Stricken Recumbent Stone Circle Strachan is a reconstructed recumbent stone circle. In 1830, the ring was toppled by the tenant farmer who was ordered to re-erect the site by the landowner. However, it was not rebuilt correctly. The rebuild was positioned south of the original location with the recumbent setting now on the North Ark. This re-erection was taken down in 1965 where the megaliths lay in a heap to the southeast. The circle has a diameter of around 15 metres and consists of 10 locally quarried grey granite stones. Seven stones make up the ring with one fallen in the southwest arc and the other three stones being the flankers and recumbent. The stones are graded in height from the highest in the south southeast to the lowest in the north northwest. Inside the circle was what seems to be post holes from a timber ring or roundhouse structure. This construction had an opening at the east. It is unknown if this was pre or post the megalithic ring being erected. The recumbent stone is over two and a half metres long by just over one metre high and positioned south-southeast. The recumbent resembles a millstone when viewed from inside the circle. The inner face of the recumbent bears a single cup mark. The east flanker is nearly two metres high, with the west flanker slightly smaller and thinner. Excavations took place from 1979 to 1982. The 1979 dig by Aubrey Burrow revealed the circle's original north location. In 1981, the ring was re-erected again, this time in its correct position. During the excavation, the finds were a female cremation located at the northeast bank, flints, shards, several hammer and rubbing stones. A cup and ring marked rock was buried in a small stone lined pit. Quartz flakes were also found in the bank. Strachan Stone Circle is located just outside the village of Strachan in the north of Aberdeenshire. The site has public access and is in the care of Historic Environment Scotland. Ardlayer Recumbent Stone Circle From Ardlayer Recumbent Stone Circle is probably the best scenery of the beautiful Aberdeenshire countryside. The Neolithic people erected this site three millennia before Christ. Ardlayer is a much disturbed site but still very worth a visit for the stone circle enthusiast. The recumbent and flankers survive with four other fallen stones scattered around the circumference. There was originally nine standing stones plus the recumbent on a diameter of 11 metres. The circle surrounds a low mound of earth and stones. In 1857, this circular bank was noted as not concentric with the circle. The bank was nearer the south of the ring this feature is now obscured with field clearance debris. Scottish archaeo astronomer Alexander Tom measured Ardlayer and found a true circle. Charles Elphinstone Dalrymple excavated the site in 1857. The findings were a small amount of charcoal, incinerated bone, light yellow loam along with a few stones. The recumbent is orientated south-southeast and made of granite. The stone measures 3 metres long by 1.7 metres high and 1 metre thick. Two stone slabs project outwards from the recumbent's interior face. 
These two stones have cup marks and resemble a similar feature at Easter Aquathis. The two flankers still survive and are roughly the same height as the recumbent, which is unusual. The west flanker is 1.5 metres high, the dome-shaped eastern flanker is slightly higher. This ancient relic from the New Stone Age sits on top of a hill with the mighty Tapu North in clear view. Tapu North resembles a huge recumbent landscape figure, which was likely very important in the placement of the site. Please check out my YouTube video on Tapu North. The first record of Ardlia was by George Donaldson in 1794. A sketch of Ardlia by Christian McLagan in 1857 shows four standing stones, the two flankers and a recumbent. Presently, there is only one standing stone. F.R. Coles visited in 1900, he learned from a farmer that in 1821 an excavation resulted in an urn being found. Ardlea Stone Circle is located just off the B9002 road and a few miles southeast from the village of Kennethmont. Public access is granted to the site. Cothy Muir Wood Recumbent Stone Circle. In Cothy Muir Wood, you will find probably the most impressive recumbent and flanker setting of all the Aberdeenshire circles. Again, this is another fascinating and must visit site. This was a huge feat of engineering by the Neolithic people of North East Scotland. The site is now surrounded by trees, which makes landscape observations difficult. Dr. Richard Bradley excavated Cothy Muir Wood and published information in a now out of print book called The Moon and the Bonfire, an investigation of three stone circles in North East Scotland. The other two circles are A.K. Bray and Tom Navery. The first note of Cothy Muir Wood was in 1692 by James Garden. John Holm made the first description of the circle on an estate map of Castle Forbes in 1771. The fine recumbent stone is made of basalt and weighs in at 20 tonnes. It is orientated south-southwest and measures 4.2 metres long by 1.25 metres high. A personal theory is the recumbent represents a male stone. At the western end underneath is a support stone. At the back of the recumbent is natural markings known as the devil's hoof marks. There is also possible man-made cup marks on the outer face. The two impressive flankers are the highest stones. These reduce in height from the south-southwest towards the north-northeast. The flankers are roughly the same height at 2.7 metres. The east flanker is rectangular shaped and may represent the male, with the western flanker more triangular which may be symbolic of the female. In the present day, eight stones remain. Four of these are still standing and create a diameter of 20 metres. The surviving stones are in the south-east to north arc, with two stones leaning heavily in the northwest area. Perhaps 11 would have been the original number of standing stones. The circle also encloses a well-preserved cairn, which is not visible. In the middle of the ring, you will find a kist slab, which is very unusual. An old track slices through the west side of the circle. Cothymuir Wood is situated in the Gordon district of Aberdeenshire and located near the village of Keek and Castle Forbes. The ring is just off the B992 road, near a natural burial ground. Public access is granted with a car park and a short walk into the wood. Whitehill Recumbent Stone Circle Whitehill is a very ruinous stone circle and one of the lesser known sites but still very worth a visit for the keen megalithomaniac to explore. 
The site is situated on a southeast sloping terrace on White Lady Hill. The circle is also known as Tilly Fury. Our ancient ancestors erected this site in the Neolithic or Bronze Age. The circle has a diameter of 20 metres with two upright stones still remaining out of an original 13. A number of these fallen stones can still be seen. All the stone is grey or pink granite. A surviving standing stone in the northwest arc appears to be a male stone of pink granite. The grey granite recumbent is orientated on a south southwest arc. It is 2.85 metres long by 1.45 metres high. The western flanker is 2.3 metres high and arches over the end of the recumbent. The eastern flanker has fallen, however. This is 2.6 metres in height. Clive Ruggles and Aubrey Burrow worked in White Hill's astronomical alignments and found the flankers frame the summit of Green Hill, two and a half miles to the south southwest. A 17 metre diameter wing cairn can be found inside the circle. The inner central court is 4.5 metres in diameter, both are well preserved. The 16 stones of the inner kerb decrease in height from the south to north. The circle is located just off the B993 road near Tilly Fury with public access and a car park, then a one mile walk to the circle. Sun Honey Recumbent Stone Circle Sun Honey is a special recumbent stone circle and possibly one of the oldest which features a heavily cut marked recumbent stone. The site was formerly known as Sun Honey and was lightly constructed in the Neolithic making the site between 4,000 and 2,000 years before Christianity. Sun Honey Circle has a diameter of 25 metres. Nine other standing stones reduce in height from the flankers. All the standing stones are reddish granite or gneiss. The shortest stone is in the east-southeast, which is unusual. Sun Honey was restored in the 18th century. An excavation took place in 1865 and found deposits of cremated bone and a fire marked stone in a 2.5 metre diameter central space. Pottery fragments lay in the southwest of the ring cairn in a circular kist. The 5 metre by 1.5 metre high recumbent stone has fallen backwards and split in two. It is made of grey granite and orientated southwest. The two flankers are over two metres high. The heavily cut marked inner face is now the top surface. Sun Honey's recumbent is probably the most cut marked in all the Aberdeenshire stone circles. Between 28 and 31 cut marks have been recorded. The exact number will be very difficult to count. These circular carved depressions must have been very important to the ancient people as they appear on natural rock outcrops, standing stones and stone circles all over the UK. These glyphs are beyond our modern interpretation. Archaeo astronomer Professor Alexander Tom visited and measured Sun Honey and found a true circle. Aubrey Burrell suggested that because of the height of the horizon, the circle was aligned towards the saddle between Miko Tap and Greymoor the place where the southern moon at its minor setting would descend. Sun Honey is not signposted, the site has public access. The circle is located west of Ept on the B9119 road. Midmar Kirk Circle is also close by. Midmar Kirk Recumbent Stone Circle Midmar Kirk is one of the best known recumbent stone circles in Aberdeenshire. 
Situated on the grounds of a church and graveyard, here the ancient and new religions fused together. The ancient people in Aberdeenshire took considerable time, effort and skill to construct this fine recumbent stone circle, which is thought to have its genesis in the Bronze Age. The site was tidied up in 1914 when the graveyard was laid out. At this time, traces of a later burial cairn seem to have been lost. The ring is located on the main edge of a subtle terrace. The diameter of the circle is roughly 17.5 metres and all the stones are pink granite. In the present day, eight stones make up an incomplete ring with at least three stones missing. The stone in the northwest arc has likely been re-erected. This stone is probably out of place as it is not in sync with the height grading from the flankers and seems to be a male stone. The main attraction here is the 20 ton recumbent stone which is orientated to the southwest. The megalith is 4.5 meters long by 1 meter high and is one of the longer recumbent stones. The top surface is level and is supported by stones underneath the west end. Also on the top surface is carved graffiti such as initials, mason marks and a date of 1864. Two fine flankers still survive and one slightly overhangs the recumbent. They measure 2.5 metres high and are the tallest stones in the circle. The west flanker is thinner. Notice how the pointed edge of the recumbent stone just kisses the straight edge flanker. Scottish archaeo astronomer Alexander Tom visited Midmar Kirk. He took measurements and found a true circle. In 1900, F.R. Coles visited the site and said the circle was not touched since his visit. A supposed 18th century belief was the circle had been a religious druid site and people thought druidism was an offshoot of Christianity. This is why the church was placed here next to the circle. Midmar Church is located next to the B9119 road west of Ect and has public access. Sun Honey Stone Circle is also close by. Kalerli Stone Circle Compared to the recumbent stone circles of Aberdeenshire, Kalerli is a younger construction and different in design. The site is a restored Bronze Age stone circle from between 1800 BC to 1200 BC. Kalerli is just off the B9125 road and in the care of Historic Environment Scotland, the site has public access. The ancient people levelled the ground before any stones were erected and at a later date the ground was burnt by setting fire to sticks of willow. This is a well-preserved site that consists of eight pinkish granite stones in a 10 metre diameter. The boulders are between 1.8 metres and 1.1 metres high, with the stones graded in height to the north. The outer ring encircles eight small curb cairns. These were added at a later date. The cairns are surrounded by a setting of 11 small stones. The large central cairn is double curved, with 22 stones and a diameter of 3.5 metres. In 1820, nine other smaller circles to the southwest were reported by Jai Logan. No traces of these circles remain. Excavations in 1934 revealed five of the cairns contained burnt human bones, oak charcoal, along with hazel charcoal, in another cairn. Some of the other finds were three worked flints and pottery shards. Not all these deposits would have been from the same date. A 2004 survey by R. Daly found a single cut mark on the northern, eastern and southernmost outer stones. In the central cairn on the eastern stone a single cut mark can also be found. Clearly is a true circle which was measured by Professor Alexander Tom the Scottish Archaeo Astronomer. Tom 
Tom Navery recumbent stone circle. Tom Navery recumbent stone circle dates from 5,000 years ago and is one of the best preserved and well known of the 100 stone circles in North East Scotland. Just metres from the ring is a nuclear bunker. A recumbent landscape figure can be seen in the distance and the site was nearly obliterated then saved. Tom Navery is positioned on a low central area of land called the Howe of Cromar. The circle has a complex history from 4,500 years ago up until the 1600s AD. The site was nearly obliterated due to quarrying before being taken into state care in the 1920s. Some of the stones got taken down and relocated. During 1999 to 2000, the monoliths were re-erected in the correct sockets. Phase 1. The circle had two phases. The first was a cremation pyre then a circle of curved stones 14 metres in diameter was added. These curved stones increase in size from one side to the next. The curved stones resemble a polygonal shape. Two stones have cut marks. Fieldwork suggests the circles were located away from settlements. Phase 2 The second phase is a 17 metre diameter circle we see today, which was constructed around the curb cairn. The site was used again 3,000 years ago for cremation. From the 1400s to 1600s AD, the circle came into use one last time. It is unknown if each circle was linked with a community, family or individual. The southwest orientated recumbent is made of windstone. The megalith is over 3 metres long by 1 metre high and cut marks can be found on the surface. The old quarry is located directly behind the recumbent stone. The ancient people carefully placed the recumbent setting to frame the distant recumbent landscape figure of Loch Nagar. This is 20 miles away to the southwest. These landscape features can also be found from other megalithic sites in Scotland like Callanish and Machry Moor. These giant landscape figures seem to have been important to the prehistoric people and the placement of some of the stone rings. The two flankers are the tallest standing stones in the circle, which is a common theme throughout Aberdeenshire. Eight erect stones of pale red granite still survive in the present day. Perhaps a congregation or individual would stand inside the circle and watch the full moon around midsummer at the limit of its movement across the sky, which happens once every generation. During the 1999 to 2000 excavations uncovered bone, charcoal and burnt soil in the centre. Excavator Dr Richard Bradley's work can be found in the out of print book The Moon in the Bonfire, an investigation of three stone circles in North East Scotland. Professor Alexander Tom measured and visited Tom Navery in 1955 and found a true circle. A Royal Observer Corps nuclear bunker lies just metres from the circle. It was built during the Cold War to monitor possible nuclear strikes. Bedrock and boulders close by seem to have rock art on them. Tom Navery is in the care of Historic Environment Scotland. The circle has a car park and is signposted from the B9094 road. The village of Tarland is close by. Nine Stains Recumbent Stone Circle Nine Stains is a well-known recumbent stone circle in Aberdeenshire, which also goes by the name of Mullock Stone Circle. Mullock Wood is very peaceful and worth a visit for the keen ancient history enthusiast. Originally, 11 standing stones surrounded a ring cairn. One stone is missing in the northwest arc and a stump can be found in the west section. Six stones remain upright in the ring plus the recumbent and flankers. 
Nine Stains is thought to be one of the later recumbent stone circles. F.R. Coles excavated in 1904. The inside area was very stony and was probably an internal cairn. Six stones, one was missing, formed a pit which was funnel shaped and was full of burnt bone. Another pit to the north contained urn fragments and charcoal. Four spots surrounding this pit contained bone. The 2.5 metre by 1.3 metre high recumbent is orientated south southeast. Most recumbents are on the south to southwest arc. The two flankers still exist. The western flank is 2 metres high and still in its original position. Sadly, the east flank has fallen. Since my first visit in 2009, the circle was completely surrounded by trees. However, since then, some of the forestry has been stripped away, revealing part of the landscape. Scottish archaeologist astronomer Alexander Tom measured nine stains in 1955 and found what he called a type B flattened circle, which is quite rare. However, another example in Aberdeenshire is South Isey Stone Circle, which does not have a recumbent setting. The first record of nine stains was from 1692 in a note by James Garden. Nine Stains is situated eight miles southeast of Bankery in Mullock Wood Forestry Plantation between Mullock Hill and Garrow Hill. There is public access with a small information board. Two other stone circles in the area are Esley the Greater and Esley the Lesser. Clunewood Recumbent Stone Circle The Recumbent Stone Circle in Clunewood has stood silently still for circa five millennia. It is just one of a hundred recorded stone circles in Aberdeenshire. The ancient people of North East Scotland erected the site on an elevated position. The circle has a diameter of 17 metres and the ring retains its original nine stone and three stone recumbent setting. Four stones in the circle remain upright while two have fallen, one in the northeast and the other in the southwest. Another stone in the northeast arc is now reduced to a stump. A short distance behind the circle is the two Clunewood Cairns. The site was scheduled in 1925. Professor Alexander Tom visited in 1962 and measured a true circle. The south southeast orientated grey granite recumbent stone is over 9 tonnes in weight. It is around 3 metres long and just over 1 metre high. The summit of the recumbent rises towards the east. Most recumbent stones are on the southwest, however, some are southeast orientated. The two flankers still survive in their original position and are 1.5 metres high. Directly adjacent to the circle is a very disturbed cairn with a 10 metre diameter, a height of 1 metre and a central court 2 metres in diameter. The innermost kerb has 13 stones still in place. Clunewood is situated just off the B9077 road near Curtin of Juris and 6.5 miles east of Bankery. The site has public access but not signposted. An OS map is helpful in locating the circle, which sits at the southern end of the wood. Tire Bagger Recumbent Stone Circle On the outskirts of Dice and above Aberdeen Airport is Tire Bagger Recumbent Stone Circle. This is an unrestored site with a complete arrangement of 11 stones. The ring is situated on Tirebagger Hill and the ancient people erected this circle with commanding views to the south. The circle of standing stones forms a diameter of over 18 metres. They are of red granite and are nearly 3 metres high to 1.3 metres tall. They reduce in size from the south arc flankers to the north northeast. Inside the circle is the remains of an internal ring cairn. 
which is 11.5 metres across. Nine stones of the cairn can be seen in the northwest arc. The cairn possibly predated the outer stone circle. The dark grey granite recumbent is 24 tonnes and 3 metres high. It tilts inwards and rests on a foundation of small stones. The ancient architects intentionally orientated this megalith due south, which faces Brimmond Hill, two and a half miles away. The recumbent's inner face has been damaged over hundreds of years by fires. Directly opposite the recumbent, one of the megaliths in the northeast arc has fallen. Two flanking stones survive either side of the recumbent. The west flanker is over three metres and has a blocking stone between it and the recumbent. The east flanker is under three metres high and pointed at the top. The flankers are the tallest stones in the ring. Scottish archaeologist astronomer Alexander Tom measured tyre bagger in 1955 and found a true circle. The site was used as a cattle enclosure in the early 19th century. The first record of the circle was an estate map from 1748. At present, the stone circle sits in private land and the new Aberdeen City Bypass is very close by. Aquarthi's recumbent stone circle. To the west of Port Leithen lies Aquarthi's recumbent stone circle, which is a fantastic Neolithic ring in northeast Scotland. This site is not to be confused with the better known Easter Aquarthi circle near Inverurie. Aquarthi's is a complex and peculiar site. Some of the features here are unique and rarely seen at other recumbent stone circles. Three rings make up the site. The outer circle has the tallest stones. The middle ring is a close set of smaller stones which incorporates the recumbent setting. The third and innermost ring is called the central court which is just three metres wide. The outer circle has a diameter of 23 metres with around 12 standing stones. A stone in the northwest section has a possible cut mark on its outer face, half a metre above ground. The tallest standing stone is in the southwest arc at two and a half metres. The smallest stone is just over one metre in the north section. This outer ring encases a well established ring cairn. The near circular middle ring has a diameter of 15 metres. The stones are 0 0.7 metres high in the south arc and reduce in size at the north section to about 0 0.3 metres. Around 36 of these near unbroken kerb slabs are in their original position. The inside of this ring cairn has been substantially depleted. The grey granite recumbent is orientated south-southeast. It is roughly 3 metres long by 1.5 metres high. The top is slightly dome shaped and rises towards the east. The recumbent setting is set into the middle ring cairn which is unusual. The recumbent and flankers look as if they have been moved over from the outer ring and repositioned a few metres inwards to join onto the middle cairn. Only the west flanker remains which is just over 1.5 metres high and made of grey granite. All other stones are red granite. This flanker is joined to the middle circle by a near 2 metre long kerb stone. The smallest and innermost circle has only 5 remaining stones which are fitted close together and are rectangular shaped. These are over half a metre high. Close to this central court, the remains of an urn was found in the late 18th century. This was a shallow rectangular area. The first record of Aquarthies was in 1692 AD by James Garden. Professor Alexander Tom, a Scottish archaeological astronomer, visited the site in 1955 and measured a true circle. Aquarthies is situated on private land. Just visible from the site is another stone circle called Old Birdry Bush, which is a 300 metre walk away. Old 
Bear Tribush Stone Circle. Old Bear Tribush is thought to be a stone circle with no recumbent setting. It is situated west of Port Leithen, 500 metres from Acothe's recumbent stone circle, which is just visible in the distance. The site is very ruinous and lies in private land. The prehistoric people have left behind an unusual megalithic ring setting for the Aberdeenshire area. The stone circle encloses a cairn which might be a ring cairn. The spacing of the remaining stones suggests around 15 uprights. The missing stones might be underground and waiting to be excavated in the future. The site was excavated back in 1858 by Alexander Thompson. The ring is 26 metres in diameter and the tallest stone is 2.9 metres in the southwest arc and made of pink granite. The smallest stone is 1.2 metres high on the east arc. There are three fallen stones and four uprights with a possible fifth stump stone in the north. The stones reduce in height from the southwest to the northeast. All the megaliths are pointed at the top except the southernmost upright. The circle's interior has lost its curved cairn. The inside of the ring is scattered with field clearance stones. The site has been badly interfered with by excavation work. Old Bertry Bush is not thought to be a recumbent stone circle, which is unusual for North East Scotland. There is a 3.5 metre long megalith which resembles a recumbent stone. This is embedded into the cairn material which encloses the circle. This stone lies in the East Arc which is unusual for a recumbent setting and this stone is possibly just a fallen standing stone. Two standing stones in the south and southwest may have been the flankers if there was a recumbent stone. These stones are 8 metres apart and the southernmost stone bears one cup mark, one metre above ground level and slightly off centre. Aisley the Greater Recumbent Stone Circle East of Strachan and south of Bankery is a magnificent recumbent stone circle called Esley the Greater. The site is situated on private land. A good eye will make out Esley the Lesser, which is half a mile to the northeast. Also not far away is the better known Nine Stains recumbent stone circle. Originally eight or nine schist stones would have made up the 22.5 metre diameter circle. Five stones are still in their original position. Three of these are in the East Arc. The tallest megalith in the southwest is nearly two metres high. The shortest stone at nearly one metre high is in the North Arc. A fallen stone lies just outside the circle at the northwest section. The stone circle encloses a disturbed and robbed ring cairn roughly 18 metres in diameter. This encases a 6 metre diameter central court with 11 stones still surviving. It's highly likely astronomical observations were being observed from the circle many millennia ago. Notice how many of the stones are triangular shaped. This may be representing the female. Excavations took place in 1873 and revealed a masonry cast in a pit at the centre of the court. Another find was a small slab immediately next to the west flanker. Quartz was also found in between the ring cairn and central court. The slightly east of south orientated recumbent stone is nearly three metres long by one and a half metres high, which is roughly the same height as the two surviving flankers. The east flank is one metre high and the taller west flank is 1.6 metres. The east of south recumbent orientation is common in the D-side area circles. From the circle, but now obscured by trees, is Clachnaben in Glendai. This is a near 600 metre prominent hill, which has a large granite tower. This landscape feature resembles the profile of a female breast and nipple. It is highly likely the view of Clachnaben was very important in the placement of the circle. 
The name Clachnabane translates as Rock of the Hill. The female hill may have been seen as Earth Mother Goddess Worship. Clachnabane is reminiscent of another female hill in Aberdeenshire called Mother Tap, which is clearly seen from Easter Aquarius Circle. 1692 was the first record of the site in a note by James Garden. Scottish archaeologist astronomer Alexander Tom visited in 1955 and measured a true circle. The two Esley circles are nestled between Knockwood and Mullock Hill. Esley the Greater is still a magnificent stone circle which likely originated in the Neolithic and still sits in a very peaceful location with beautiful views of the Aberdeenshire countryside. Esley the Lesser Stone Circle Esley the Lesser Stone Circle is not as well known as the close by Esley the Greater or Nine Stains Recumbent Stone Circles. Here is another unusual site which does not seem to fit into the Recumbent Stone Circle category which Aberdeenshire is well known for. Esley the Lesser is in private land southeast of Bankery, just off the A9 Five Seven Road. At first glance, Esley the Lesser looks like a ruinous stone ring which encases a cairn. This site is not as impressive as its neighbour Esley the Greater. Five stones remain standing in a near 15 metre diameter circle with a ruinous cairn which takes up most of the interior and has a hollow that may have been from an 1873 excavation. The two Esley circles are just visible from each other, which may have been intentional. It's unknown if the sites are contemporary or if they ever were part of a pair. Here you find two circles visible from each other, one being a recumbent and the other a non-recumbent. A possible important clue in the placement of Esley the Lesser is a distant landscape feature known as Clachnaben in Glendai. This hill resembles a female breast with a large granite tower at the summit resembling a nipple. Human landscape features are not uncommon at prehistoric sites like Callanish with Sleeping Beauty, Machri Moor on the Isle of Arran or indeed other Aberdeenshire sites like Easter Aquarties with Mither Tap in the distance which also takes on the profile of a female breast. Perhaps the ancient ancestors were acknowledging the goddess or earth mother. Algorka Recumbent Stone Circle A few miles southwest of Kemney and opposite Castle Fraser is an excellent and stunning recumbent stone circle. This site is located on private land and also goes by the name of Castle Fraser. Its likely eight standing stones originally made up the circle, along with the three stone recumbent setting. Four of these stones still stand. Three are in the East Arc and one in the Northwest section. There is a gap in the Northeast Arc with no traces of any stone. Bulgorka is just over 20 metres in diameter and made up of pink and grey granite stones, with the highest being around 2 metres. One stone is possibly female, with its pointed triangular shape. The stone next to the east flanker seems to have a vagina-shaped cavity at its base. This could be natural and may have been intentionally selected for its female symbolism, or perhaps it was skillfully carved. Above this is what appears to be a shell feature which I have came across at some other recumbent circles. This stone also seems to have a face. The fallen stone next to the west flanker is cut marked and shards of a large urn were also found around this stone. Miller Tap is visible from Bulgorka but not now due to trees obscuring this landscape feature. This female breast shaped hill was obviously very important to the ancient architects and their placement of the recumbent stone circles in this area. Perhaps Bulgorka is a female site. 
Excavator Charles Durampo found evidence the site had been levelled before erection with a ring cairn and a four metre diameter central court. A collection of artefacts from this excavation were found in 2003 in the Castle Fraser collection, which were thought to be lost. The excavation date was the 3rd of September 1856. The finds were three shards of flat rimmed ware from the Late Bronze Age, a large number of pieces of daub with wattle impressions, and two fragments of charcoal. One wrapper was labelled bones, but no skeletal remains were found. Quartzite was also found at the circle. The fine three stone recumbent setting is orientated south southwest, which is common for the Aberdeenshire circles. The recumbent is 2.3 metres long by 1.5 metres high and has an even summit towards the hill of Fair. The flankers are 2.5 metres and 2.7 metres high. The left flanker is similar in shape to stones at Machry Moor on the Isle of Arran and Callanish on the Isle of Lewis. The outline profile resembles a hunched over older woman which may be symbolising a hag or crone which is a wise old woman. Two grey granite outlier stones survive just under 300 metres from the circle. The purpose of these stones are uncertain but a popular theory is a processional ritual avenue towards the circle. The stones are 15 metres apart and just over 3 metres high. One stone is speckled with quartz. The earliest record is a depiction by Alexander Law from 1788. In 1829, James Logan said they are originally consisted of 11 stones, which nine remained. By 1900, F.R. Cole said seven stones remained standing. Alexander Tom measured a true circle while visiting in 1955. And during cultivation in 2002, another stone was knocked over and split in two. Old Keg Recumbent Stone Circle Two and a half miles north of Alford, on the hill of Early, is Old Keg Recumbent Stone Circle. The huge megalith recumbent stone is the biggest in Aberdeenshire, weighing in at 53 tonnes. This was a monumental feat of engineering for our Neolithic ancestors from 3000 BC. Cothiemuir Wood Recumbent Circle is just one mile away and is another must-visit site. And like Old Keg, it has a very large recumbent stone. Old Keg has fantastic views south over the Howe of Alford. The circle is situated on private land near Old Keg Farmhouse. At either side of the recumbent is a flanker. This recumbent and flanker setting is unique to Aberdeenshire. The flankers are just over two metres high. The west flanker is slender and pointed with the east flank being broader. One standing stone outside the recumbent setting survives in the southeast arc at nearly three metres high. Over 20 miles away, the summit of Mount Keen seems to have been very important to the ancient people. This hill is framed by the recumbent setting and is reminiscent of Tapu North near Ardlair Circle. Notice how this hill resembles the female form with a breast and a pregnant belly. The south southwest orientated recumbent is made of sillimanite gneiss and was transported six miles from the Don Valley. The megalith is around 5 metres long by 2 metres high and 2 metres thick. It sits in a bed of packing stones with an outer smooth face. The recumbent's south-southwest orientation may suggest a winter solstice sunset alignment. This three stone setting may act as a viewing window for astronomical events. The Neolithic people perhaps congregated at the ring to witness celestial events. Gordon Child excavated in 1932. He found a large bank of stones and three fallen megaliths, two in the north and three in the eastern arc. Other finds were tiny fragments of human cremated bone. 
portions of at least three large flat rimmed urns, beaker pot shards and charcoal. Child also found a 22 metre diameter central cairn which was heavily robbed. Today roughly five upright cairn stones can be seen. Other fallen stones can be found lying recumbent in the grass. The first dig was recorded in 1692. Ashes were found in the now missing central cairn. The first written record was in the 1820s by James Logan. Hatton over Doyne recumbent stone circle. Just off the B9002 road near Inch and situated on private land is Hatton over Doyne recumbent stone circle. Our prehistoric ancestors erected this ring circa 3000 BC in an area of stunning natural beauty overlooking the Aberdeenshire countryside. Dunedir Hillfort Mither Tap and Benahi can all be seen from the circle, which was likely intentional by the ancient architects. The circle is 25 metres by 27 metres and is now much depleted. It is enclosed by a modern fence. Nine stones remain out of a possible 13. Three are upright with two fallen and another two are displaced. The central focus here is the south-southwest orientated recumbent stone, which is 2.5 metres long by 2 metres high. The 2.8 metre tall east flanker survives leaning against the recumbent and seems to point like a finger to the tip of Mother Tap, which just breaks the horizon over Benahee. An excavation site was dug in the centre of the circle. This is likely the 1885 Charles Dorimpo excavation. The area is 10 metres by 3 metres and half a metre deep. According to Charles Dorimpo, there were two concentric rings inside the circle that were raised above the other like steps. These rings had diameters of 21 metres and 19 and a half metres. That another doing was first recorded by James Skene in the 1820s, Christian McLagan drew the site in 1875. His drawings show six megaliths plus the recumbent and two flankers. There appears to be stones missing from the East Ark. The drawing also shows the curb ring inside the circle, which looks unbroken bar the southwest arc. A grave in the centre was found, which was 1.7 metres long by 0.5 metres and over 1 metre deep. This was paved with small boulders. Another find was a small amount of burnt bone and fragments of an urn which was burnt red at each end. The grave was filled in with earth and capped with another layer of small boulders. A curb stone to the east of the recumbent supposedly shows two shallow cut marks on the outer face. Around 20 of these curb stones are visible mostly in the south and north arc. These mini lifts decrease in size away from the recumbent. No doubt this magical and lesser known circle at Harton of Ardoin holds many secrets still waiting to be discovered. Inchfield Recumbent Stone Circle Inchfield Recumbent Stone Circle is situated in a vast ceremonial landscape which was obviously very important to the prehistoric people in the area we now call Aberdeenshire. The circle is situated on private land a few miles north of Inch Village at Inchfield Farm. Inchfield Recumbent Stone Circle is a much depleted site but the keen stone circle enthusiast will be keen to visit and appreciate the landscape this site is held within. From the conception of this construction circa 3000 BC, a recumbent stone flanker and a fallen standing stone are all that remains in the present day. The south-southwest orientated recumbent stone is over 4 metres long and 2.5 metres high. 
This stone has fallen backwards into the circle and is split in two down the middle. At the east side of the recumbent stone stands a three metre high flanker. A shallow hollow area extends out from the recumbent. In the north arc is a fallen two metre long megalith. It is positioned directly opposite the recumbent. This surviving stone gives the site a diameter of roughly 25 metres. In 1876, this stone was one of at least four stones still standing. In 1868, six stones were recorded on a map. The circle rests on the southern end of a low crest hill. And during field clearance, quartz was found within the site. Southwest from the circle is Dunedir Hill, which seems to be some kind of focal point. Miller Tap and Benaki are also visible. Tap and North peaks just over the horizon. No doubt the Neolithic people carefully placed Inchfield Circle with these prominent landscape features in show. It is highly likely astronomical observations were taking place from the circle. Wanty Wells Recumbent Stone Circle Wanton Wells Recumbent Stone Circle is a much depleted site which sits in an area rich in prehistoric remains. This site would have been erected in the Neolithic era, 2500 BC. The landscape around Wanton Wells has done the Deer Hill, the Hill of Christ, Kirk and Benaki all visible. In the southwest arc is the recumbent stone, which is the only remaining megalith still standing. It is nearly 3.5 metres long and over 2 metres high, with the top being slightly rounded. It is said to match the shape of Satter Hill to the southwest. An east flanker still survives, however, it has fallen sometime after 1921. This stone is nearly 3 metres long. A photo from 1901 shows the flanker upright and nearly diamond shaped. A pile of stones from field clearance can be found between the recumbent and flanker. There is a ground depression in the area near the recumbent. In the years before 1866, three other stones were removed. The first record of the site was in 1876 by the OS surveyors. Trees now surround part of Wanton Wells Circle making observations to the Dunedir area difficult. The site is very easy to access and very close to the single track minor road. This is a site for the enthusiastic stone seeker, which probably gets overlooked. Dunedir Recumbent Stone Circle Dunedir is one of five stone circles in the area which have Dunedir Hill visible from each individual site. All that remains of Dunedir Circle is the recumbent and two flankers. The site has public access. The remains of this circle is the closest site to Dunedir Hill, which is reminiscent of Glastonbury Tor. Dunedir Hill is best viewed from the site in the winter months when the trees that surround the stones are bare of leaves. The south-southwest orientated recumbent is nearly 3 metres long by 2 metres high. This stone is the only one in its original position. Dunedir was first recorded in 1578 by John Leslie. An 1832 drawing of the site shows only the recumbent upright. Two flanker stones either side of the recumbent are not in their original position. They have been re-erected. Each flanker is roughly two metres high and one metre long. The east stone was re-erected in 1976. The west flank is out of place by one metre and is split in two. Dunedir Hill and Circle were both affected by fire. The project was funded by Historic Scotland, now Historic Environment Scotland, to assess the damage 
to the upstanding archaeology and exposed remains. Although little remains of Dunedir Circle, it is still very worth a visit, which can be combined with a visit to Dunedir Hill, where you can enjoy stunning views over the Aberdeenshire countryside and explore the ruins of one of Scotland's oldest castles. Stonehead Recumbent Stone Circle Stonehead is situated a few miles west of Inch and not far from Dunedir Hill Fort and very close to Wantonwell's Circle. The site is also known as Alton. Only the two flankers and recumbent stone remain, which is the same as the nearby Dunedir site. The ancient people very carefully placed Stonehead with the mighty Tapo North and Dunedir Hill in clear view. The large southwest orientated recumbent is four metres long and this might be the tallest recumbent stone in Aberdeenshire. The top of the stone is slightly curved and at the back of the recumbent is stones from a field clearance or possible ring cairn. The west flanker is the tallest at around three metres high but is also the thinnest. The east flanker is two and a half metres tall and there appears to be simulacra with a face at the right hand side which looks towards the Dunedir Hill Fort. Directly south is the Hill of Christ's Kirk. To the southwest is the Hill of Flinder. These two hills seem to take on a female shape. The first record of Stonehead was in a sketch from the 1820s. Stonehead sits in private land and although there are no circle stones which survive. The huge recumbent and flankers that remain are among the most impressive in Aberdeenshire. Candle Hill Recumbent Stone Circle The ring is situated in private land on the summit of a small hill just a few miles northwest of Inch Village and close to the Pictish inscribed Cardi Stone. The circle now lies shattered, but the Keen Stone Circle explorer will be glad to have visited and appreciate what has survived from deep antiquity. While researching Candle Hill Circle, it became clear the location of the ring was very important to the ancient architects. Two structures were erected at this location from different timelines. In 1996, during excavation, a wooden structure was located just a few metres from the stone circle. The ancient people carefully placed the ring in clear view of prominent landscape features such as Tapu North, Benahi and Dunedir. It is likely astronomical observations would have been taking place from the circle. The recumbent stone and flankers have toppled inwards the slightly east of south orientated recumbent is 4 metres long by 2 metres high. Cup marks can be found in this stone. The L shaped west flanker is 2.6 metres tall and half a metre thick. The toppled east flank is roughly 2 metres long by 1 metre high and again is cup marks on display. The diameter of the circle is 13 metres. All the stones have fallen and are displaced bar one in the North Ark, which is called the Candle Stain. Stain is a Scottish word for stone. It is likely there were eight standing stones out with the recumbent setting. Inside the circle is a central cairn, seven metres in diameter and one metre in height. The northwest arc of the circle is well defined and is where you will find most of the fallen stones. The westernmost stone is cup marked. These cups are common in stone circles and standing stones but are predominantly found in natural rock outcrops. Excavations took place in 1996 and a fascinating circular timber structure came to light just 5 metres from the stone circle. 
Roughly half of the 15 metre diameter structure was excavated and the remains of three concentric post hole rings were located with a possible entrance at the East Arc. Part of the west section was lost to quarrying. Radiocarbon dating of charcoal was from the 1st millennium BC. This is late Bronze Age to early Iron Age. No artefacts were recovered. The structure has been interpreted as the remains of a roundhouse. The wooden structure and stone circle suggests a ritual location that has been reused. Candle Hill recumbent circle is not well known and is an off the beaten track site. The ring is situated in a very important Neolithic landscape which is littered with ancient remains. Candle Hill would have once been an important and fine recumbent stone circle. Curtain of Bertie recumbent stone circle. Three miles northeast of Inverurie and south of Old Meldrum is Curtain of Bertie recumbent stone circle. This is a scheduled ancient monument which sits in private land. Our Neolithic ancestors erected this enigmatic site around 2500 BC. Directly north is the Hill of Barra, due east is Sheldon Stone Circle. From Curtain of Bertie is stunning views over to Benahi, Mother Tap is clearly seen along with Tapu North. These landscape features seem to have been very important to the prehistoric architects. 4,500 years after being built, Curtain of Bertie has four surviving granite stones. The original diameter was around 20 metres, with an estimated 10 or 11 stones completing the circle. Some of these megaliths may be in a nearby wall or in the pile of stones around the recumbent. A large but damaged recumbent stone survives orientated south-southwest and estimated to be over 30 tonnes. It is 5 metres long by 2 metres high and 1 metre broad. This rests on a base of small stones. At the east end of the recumbent next to the flanker is a cavity which has been filled in with a triangular shaped stone. The recumbent is slightly domed at the summit and shaped erratically. At either side of the recumbent is a pile of stones which could be field clearance or the remains of the internal cairn that was noted in the 19th century. Up until 1999, the interior of the circle was being ploughed. At the centre of the upper surface of the recumbent is a possible single cut mark which was recorded by George Curry in 2007. The one remaining flanker is the tallest stone at 3 metres. Two other standing stones in the Western Art survive with heights of 1.8 metres and 2.1 metres. Notice how the stone on the right has possible simulacra with the profile of a face at the right hand side. The Reverend Thomas Shepherd referenced three circles in the 18th century, two of them nearly complete. An OS map from 1867 shows the circle in its present state. In the same year, the ring was recorded as rudely paved. This may have been the base of the cairn. Sheldon Stone Circle Sheldon Stone Circle is very interesting as it does not seem to be a recumbent circle as no flankers or recumbent stone seem to have existed. Sheldon is situated southeast of Old Meldrum on private land. Another site nearby is Curtain of Bertie, recumbent stone circle. First impressions of the site looks quite straightforward, but on closer inspection of the stones and landscape, Sheldon is certainly an interesting circle. The ring has been very carefully placed by the ancient architects with commanding panoramic views around the stunning Aberdeenshire countryside. It is highly likely the ancient people were observing astronomical events. The Mother Hill of Mother Tap 
which resembles a female breast, can be seen in the distance. This hill is part of Bena Key and was probably a key component in the placement of the circle. Closer inspection of the stones reveals possible male-female symbolism. The eastern outlier stone is triangular and is lightly acknowledging the female, along with other stones in the circle, while others resemble a male phallus. This male-female symbolism may have had a fertility meaning or could represent negative positive or yin-yang. Six out of a possible 13 or 14 stones remain. The circle was roughly 27 metres in diameter. A cairn was removed around 1820 and a stone kist was found containing ashes. Human remains were also unearthed one metre east of the circle. Sheldon may have been created around five millennia ago in the Neolithic era. South Isey Stone Circle South Isey is a small and enigmatic stone circle. The ancient people erected this ring with no recumbent stone, which is quite unusual for Aberdeenshire. The circle was restored in 1994 by Tarves Heritage Project and Shell Better Britain. Permission was granted from Historic Environment Scotland and the Mackey family. The circle is situated just off the B999 road and has public access. The six boulder setting is roughly 8.2 metres in diameter and sits on a levelled off artificial platform which is around 1 metre high. The circle is thought to have been constructed in 2000 BC which makes it late Neolithic or early Bronze Age. South Isey is a so-called Druid's Temple which consists of three windstone gneiss, two porphyritic stones with seams of quartz and one grey granite stone. These geological stone variations were likely intentional by the ancient boulders. The boulders are around 0.8 metres to 1.7 metres high and rise in height towards the southwest. A map from 1868 shows a seven stone circle. Alexander Tom measured South Isey and found a tight B flattened circle, which is rare in Aberdeenshire. However, another example of this is the Nine Stains Recumbent Stone Circle. In 1818, a large cairn of stones was removed near the circle. At the bottom of the cairn, several kists were uncovered with evidence of many cremations. 200 metres to the northeast of the circle, records showed an outlying stone with a nearby kist. This standing stone was roughly 1.5 metres high by 1.2 metres wide and was said by an old local resident to be one remaining of the outer circle which formerly stood here. This stone has disappeared since at least 1902 when F.R. Coles visited. Rothamy Recumbent Stone Circle North of Huntley and just off the B9117 road at the small village of Milltown of Rothamy is Rothamy Recumbent Stone Circle, situated near the Devon River. This is the biggest prehistoric circle in the area. Our Neolithic ancestors erected these stones around 4,500 years ago. The Reverend James Simmy recorded the site as a preserved entire in 1797. By the mid-1860s, the site was reduced to its present state. The circle is situated in private land with livestock. Four standing stones survive, two stones in the southeast arc and two in the northwest. The tallest stone has at least four cut marks on its outer face. All four standing stones are roughly two metres high and the circle's interior has been cultivated intensively. Between 12 and 14 megaliths would have originally completed a 28 metre diameter ring, now only 5 remain. 
a large male light basalt recumbent is the central focus of the circle, with no flankers surviving. The recumbent is around 4.5 metres long by 2 metres high. The top is raised at the east side, the west end is supported by a stone underneath. The recumbent is offset to the circumference and orientated southwest. This may be connected with the winter solstice sunset. What is very interesting and makes Rothamy stand out is its heavily cut marked recumbent. This has more carvings than any other megalith in Aberdeenshire. The exact number varies. The top has at least 19 cups. The inner face has well over 100 glyphs. And 10 of these are surrounded by a single ring. F.R. Coles visited the site in 1902. He mentioned a possible inner circle that had an interesting embankment that carried around the circle to the east and northeast, then its ditches were turned off to form a sort of avenue by which the circle was approached. The geophysical survey was carried out in 1998, and a few finds were anomalies. It could be several stone holes and an internal cairn. So these possible finds give support to FR Cole's double circle. Thanks for watching the documentary. Please leave a comment or question for a personal reply. Feel free to share the film. Thanks to my Patreons and a megalithic thanks to the recumbent stone circle builders of Aberdeenshire.